Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here, and today we're looking at the best position 4 player in the world. That's Crit from Evil Geniuses. He's playing the Shaman, and this is a signature hero of his. Well, EG first faces this hero almost every game they get it, right? Many teams have even been first banning Crit's Shadow Shaman against him because of how dominant he's actually been. So let's see why he's so dominant in this game, see what work he actually puts in to win it for the boys, and yeah, let's get into it. But before we do, smash the like button, and of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a lot, really, you know? And, uh, of course, the last thing I want to mention is the Game Leap website. If you guys didn't know, we're putting out a video there every single day, right? And, uh, I think you would really enjoy it, you know? If you feel like the YouTube videos maybe aren't enough, or you're just stuck, you can't get to the next bracket and you really want to, pick up a sub, you know? Try it out, give it a shot for a month, and you're gonna really see that it's gonna help you, you know? It's gonna get you to the next level give you some really good ideas to play on and hopefully make you less tilted, right? Just, uh, you know, because you're going to go into the game, you're going to know what you want to do and, and be able to play from there. But all right, let's get into the video. So when you're playing Shadow Shaman, the item you essentially always want to start with is boots. Otherwise, you just feed. For instance, in this lane, he's laning against Alk Nyx, a pretty easy lane, let's be real. You know, the only threat here is that uh, Alk Acid Spray reduces armor by four, which would bring him to zero armor, making him take a lot of damage. If he gets stunned in Acid Spray, it could be bad. However, with boots, it's not the end of the world, right? Your 330 movement speed, four armor, 74 auto attack. It's actually quite insane, the stats you have, right? It's really, really good. Now, what do you want to do in the laning stage? You're going to see here, he knows this is a favorable lane. So how is he going to be playing? Very up. He's going to be contesting every single creep, every single deny, and hitting Alk every single time. Why? Because in favorable matchups, you want to do the most possible. This is a giga favorable matchup. It's not like a slightly favorable. And so you're going to see he's going to go for these denies. When you're playing Shaman or any hero with high base damage and you're a support, contest denies. There's no reason not to. A lot of people just forget. They're like, oh, less hitting and denying is for the course. No, it's not. In fact, in high MMR games, very often the offlaner in position 4 are going to consistently work together to deny elastic creeps. Even in pubs, yes, even in pubs with no communication like this one, they'll work together to deny creeps because they understand the common goal. Win the CS battle. Other than that, you can see here he's just trying not to get stunned in acid. It's a very heads up play from crit. He understands his weakness in this lane, which is what I said. Getting hit in acid, right? Getting stuck in acid. Uh, and that's about it. Other than that, though, he's going to go very aggressive. He's essentially just going to nuke the Elk as much as he feels fitting. Uh, honestly, I would even say that the, the tip here that's totally fine is to nuke the Elk off cooldown. You know, after all, Aether Shock is only 100 mana. Frankly, that's nothing. And so unless he needs to secure range creep, he can just Aether Shock the Elk. Also, you can snipe couriers. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you go boots, frankly, if you're playing any position four hero, if you have boots... These deep wars are, are courier sniping machines. You see this ward right here? This is a really nice ward in my opinion for two reasons. Number one, snipes couriers, which we just saw. And number two, it scouts out the poles. So if you're looking for a ward that doesn't commonly get dewarded, if you can sneak this around, you know, at the beginning of the game during the nighttime phase, really recommend it. It's going to put in a lot of work, get you a lot of couriers. Next up, let's quickly talk about the Shaman combo. This applies to any hero with a nuke, frankly. A low cast range, uh, I'm sorry, low cast point nuke, that is. So when he walks up to the, the Nyx, or any hero that he walks up to, what he wants to do when he's going to Aether Shock the Nyx is he wants to hit, then shock, then hit. Auto attacks have a cooldown, like spells, right? And therefore, you want to cancel the animation, and most importantly... Right when your your auto attack is on cooldown, you want to be doing something else, and that's your nuke. So you can see hit, instantly nuke, and then after that he's gonna back up hit. Obviously it's a melee hero, so he wants to kite as much as possible. After that, anytime you contest a pull, it's very important that you drag that pull around. Right, bring it all the way around and reset the equilibrium to you know your your lane. You want to pull it back as much as possible. Remember in these favorable lanes, what do you want to do? You want to harass your opponents and get the lane back. Because when you get the lane back, you can actually harass him effectively. Now, in this game here, we're going to see that he actually takes two points in the shackle. It's not something you see every day, uh, but let's talk about why this might be viable. Number one, I would say his team does have quite a bit of kill threat, right? They have a Storm, pretty mobile, Phoenix, mobile, Legion, PL, all very quick heroes who can get on top of whoever you shackle. So I think there's a lot of value there. Secondly, the enemy team has a lot of mobility. We have Leap, Sakuchi, Batrider Firefly. Even Nyx is hard to kill, so uh, I think the Shackle makes sense for that reason. And they even have a hard time canceling the Shackle, right? 
I mean, there's Arrow, but then you're arrowing a Shaman, which is, like, fairly mediocre in, like, a small skirmish, right? You're essentially forcing the Arrow, which is, uh, I would say, a win. Um, impale and unstable concoction, but Alk doesn't take that, and so it, it's a very good shackles game for that reason. And really, one thing I want to stress about Shaman, I think a lot of people get stuck in this idea that they want to gank mid. Now, if your matchup is incredibly favorable, let's say you have Viper against TA. Absolutely, head on over to mid and gank. In this game, it's Storm against Bat. It's not unkillable, it's just very hard to kill. Naturally, if they mess up the gank too, Shaman is dead. Batrider will easily kill him. And therefore, he doesn't really put a high priority on ganking. He knows his lane is uh, likely a winnable lane, which, you know, he did okay. And he didn't do insane. Honestly, the Alk ends up uh, being the Legion by quite a bit. To be fair, it's an Alk. But I hope you see what I'm saying, right? What I'm saying is anytime you're playing Shaman, it's crucial that unless you're contesting runes, right? Let's say it's a four minute power rune, that you don't really walk mid, especially if your offlaner needs your help to lane right? Don't, don't leave. Your hero's a great laner, and therefore, right, as long as you can uh, keep that lane alive and, and continue to dominate your lane, stay there. Next up, let's take a look to see what Crit does with his first snakes. After all, this is one of your biggest timings, and one of my biggest pet peeves when I watch players play Lion and Shaman is their inability to use their level 6 timing. Notice how he also has both of the smokes. You're playing Shaman, what do you want to do? You want to set up kills, and therefore, if you don't have the smokes, you're going to have a very hard time doing that. So funny enough, in this game, he just decides it's horrible. He's like, yeah, this game's unplayable. I can't do anything. I can't kill anybody. I'm just going to hit some ancients. Frankly, it's a very bizarre decision. Okay, let's be real. It's weird. It's weird. Why would he do this? After all, his team, when it comes to neutral items, they have them all already. So it's not like, oh, you know, uh, you want to kill ancients so you can get those neutral items. No, it's not that. I think he just decides literally that his team can't do anything. And I would say that... They can do some stuff, right? I would say that they could smoke with the Storm and the Legion, and, you know, he probably knows that they can make plays, but the problem is the enemy team will definitely counter gank it. We talked about earlier how the enemy team has a lot of mobility. So what will happen, right? Well, what will happen if A, they try to sneak a tower, or B, they try to gank it here in the jungle? What's going to happen? They're going to get counter ganked and probably die, right? And so he feels that, you know, if he makes that type of play, it's probably not going to work, which I kind of understand. They have a PL, a Storm. A couple heroes that kind of need to come online. Even Phoenix as a, as a support takes a while to come online. He didn't get the Tome as the 5 here, right? And because he didn't get the Tome, he, you know, he's going to have to find a lane to get the 6. Until the 6, the Phoenix is like, you know, fairly underwhelming as a hero. And so Crit slows down the pace of the game and kills some agents. Bizarre, yes, but hey, you make the stack. You're going to hit level 11. You can also bring out this camp. He did try to stack this one as well. Unfortunately, he messed it up. But hey, it's a lot of XP. You got a full level worth of XP. And uh, honestly, I definitely think that's a very, very, very viable strategy in solo queue. A lot of people are going to say that, Oh, speed, that would only work in a high Lamar game. No, it wouldn't. If anything, they might flame you more for doing something that crazy because it's unorthodox. Well, actually, I mean, people get flamed for doing unorthodox things in all brackets, but you get what I'm saying? It works. You need your Aether Lens to really be a hero. If you don't believe me, try playing Shaman and not buying Aether Lens. It's miserable. You just die. Next up, I love the decision making from Crit here. I just think it's like a great example of not panicking and why pros are pros. Like, wh what makes a pro a pro? This is an example of that. It might not seem like anything crazy, but I believe this to be something that really makes a pro a pro. Right here, who should he hex and who should he shackle? Think about it. I'll give you guys like a couple seconds. Who should he hex and who should he shackle? Right here in this scenario. All right, take your guesses. The answer is neither of them. Neither. He shouldn't hex or shackle either. He's invis, so he doesn't have to protect himself. The Legion has no mana. And so there's no follow-up. The only thing that hexing would do here is get him killed. There's no follow-up, right? And so what does he do instead? He shifts over to the top here. He sees the Batrider is going on the PL. Batrider doesn't expect the invis shaman. And he's almost able to set up a kill. Now, unfortunately, the Nyx was on his game, right? Nyx read that and picks up the kill. Incredibly played by their Nyx. If he wasn't as fast as he was, that would have set up a big kill onto the Battle Rider, who is currently level 11 for the PL. Would have been a game-changing play. But he's got, you guys see what I'm saying? That discipline, most players do not have that. Because they don't understand. They don't. They can't look at their Legion's mana. They kind of just look at their own game, right? They're like, oh yeah, I can, sh I can Hex Shackle. That's what my hero does. That's what I'm doing, right? But what's the problem with that? There's no follow-up. You need follow-up. And then after that, you're going to split push, like literally, guys, like, 
you want to split push as much as you can, even without Ether Shock Max. Like here, he has right, he has maxed out Hex. This is the common build on Shaman right now. Really, the reason is because like you can't use full duration shackles early on, and you just want to play this hero around disable. Like that's literally how people see it. Hex is just hex, it's just value. It's just a valuable spell, you know. Like uh, and and honestly. Having a maxed out hex also allows you to ward trap people really easily. That's a big thing too. You can hex into wards, into shackle really easily. On top of that, it allows you to basically make the decision whether or not you want to shackle. You you lead with the hex and you can be like, okay, he's hexed. I can either decide to shackle or not here, right? It's, it's up to me. I, I, I have some time to do that. And I think this fight is a great example of why the hex can be very valuable regardless of the fight goes, you know, in your favor or not. So... Right away, breaks out, instantly gonna snake here, playing it safe, sees the next, doesn't want to get bursted. Beautiful, beautiful hex. Why? Because this would have been a three-man stun. Quite the disaster. But instead, he gets that off, then he's gonna lead with the shackle, right? Might have tanked the arrow there. He would have been fine with tanking the arrow, honestly. I'm sure he would have been fine with it. And yeah, this ends up being quite a good fight for their team. They get off a nice egg here, follows up for a kill onto the Nyx Assassin as well. And overall, a beautifully played fight. So keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to like not hex the first person you see. Even there, he didn't hex the Weaver. Why? Because the Weaver got dueled. And finally, after all is said and done in his good early game, he's uh, managed a 15 minute hex. 1540, I should specify. But that's the timing you want to go for. Not necessarily 15. I recommend aiming for more like 16, 17. After all, he's 3 and 0 with a 28 CS. But I think a 16 to 18 minute blink dagger. I mean, sorry, a 16 to 18 minute Aether Lens is a good timing to aim for. Next up, I'd like to talk about this fight in general from an overall Dota perspective, not necessarily just from a Shaman's perspective, just like why the enemy team kind of throws here, in my, in my opinion. It's just something that like I, I see a lot of teams do all the time and honestly just rarely works out. So let's get into it. Essentially what we see here, we see a smoke, right? So Crit and the boys are going to pop a smoke. They're rapping. They see the Alco mid, right? And they know they, they can jump this guy, you know? He's tanky, but he doesn't have like a heart yet, right? It's not like some heart alc where he has like 4k, 5k HP. And so he's still jumpable. They also, I, th I think they have a Blade Mail Legion, right? Yeah. Oh, they have a Blade Mail BKB Legion, even better, right? So she can basically guarantee to get the duel off. You know, maybe a lasso could get in the way, but honestly, that would have to be some crazy lasso. And even then, you're lassoing a Legion, which is like kind of meh. All in all, though, let's take a general look at this fight and why it's good. First things first, I think Yamson on this alc here, I uh, thought he could just get this tower without a response. He does have an AC after all, his team's behind him, so it's mostly just like a bait play. He still does want to get gone on, but fortunately for um, for Radiant, it was very well timed their smoke. They kind of were perfectly grouped up to the point where they could uh, get on top of the Alc before he gets this tower, and then the fight breaks out. And let's see what he does. Let's take a look at where he blinks. This is the number one thing here, okay? If you're playing a blink support, or like blink shaman, you don't have a BKB, you cannot blink on top of the heroes. A lot of people would blink in here. Why? Because they want to catch this and this. No! That's how you instantly die and get off no good shackles. So where does he blink? Blinks to the side here. Knows Alk doesn't have the BKB. Sure, he's Lotus, but he decides that, okay, even though he's Lotus, it's still a valuable enough hex because he has his BKB still. If he doesn't hex there, the guy gets off the BKB. So that's a very, very good hex, right? It's a very heads up hex. Then because he's stayed in the back and is out of tower and his team can buy back and TP in and, you know, just in general control the vision of the fight, he gets a shackle onto the battle rider and they win it. And then, oh, this next, this next play is dirty. I love this. I love this. So he sees Weaver pushing in bottom, okay? And he instantly TPs bottom. Now, this does two things. It either one pushes in the lanes, right? You can go there and push in the lanes, get your BKB. You know, that's the next item he's buying. Or it allows you to catch the Weaver. Now, if you take Roshan, what are people going to assume? They're going to assume you're going to either go mid or go top in this case, right? But he goes bottom, right? Crit goes bottom. It's a really cool read play that I think you can make. Anytime you take Roche, a lot of enemies will get comfortable on the bottom side of the map and you can pick them off. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. Definitely a play to, to consider. Because of that, you know, just goes in, drops the snakes. No hesitation. I love players who do this, you know. Even though the snakes don't really do that much damage at this point, it's enough, right? It's a good amount for sure. It's definitely solid. And they're able to set up a nice little duo kill for the Legion. And last but not least, let's take a good look at one last fight here and his general positioning. Remember, you always want to lead the fight with your Hex. Early game, you can lead with Aether Shock if you do max it out, right? Keep that in mind. But this game, he's primarily playing around control. And in the late game, your Aether Shock is your last priority. It's your last priority, right? You can use it just for casual damage, you know, after you've casted your other nukes and if you're safe. But in general, you're all about this Hex. You're just trying to secure a kill. So the Storm blinks in here. He just decides that, okay, it's kind of like the BKB situation where Mrana 
She's obviously going to have defensive items. Greaves, Wand, Yules, maybe Leafs. She doesn't in this case, but you get the point, right? So he goes into the Hex just to prevent her from getting that stuff off. Now, unfortunately, she does get saved by the Batrider Agadim Shard, uh, but you can see the point. Then he continues to kite out. Finally, he's going to drop the words. The fight looks good enough at this point, so he drops the words and finds a nice shackle onto the Weaver. And this is kind of why, you know, it's so important to just have this Aether Lens and always stay in the back. Too many players, what happens as a support is they get wrapped up in the fight. They're like, oh, we're diving. My storm is going in. No, 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 no. I never, until the racks are dead, even then, I never want to see you go past this hill unless it's some very crucial kill, right? It's got to be some crazy kill, like some sniper who's like, 90% of the enemy team's net worth, you know what I mean? But because he kites out, he can continue to find good hexes and good shackles. Now, it's a very awkward fight for their team. PL ends up getting caught out. It's a high ground fight. We talked about why, you know, fighting at the towers is always bad. But still, he did what he could. And lastly, this is why you buy BKB on Shaman, dude. BKB Shaman is so underrated in pubs, no one buys it. They're like, I need an Agonim, so I need a refresher. You no, know you don't. Just get a BKB and shackle people. Right, he even took the Shackles Duration Talent. This thing is dirty. Dude, this talent is dirty. He also bought the Shard, right? So he has these Shackles that he can cast from across the map that last 7 seconds. And he BKBs, so they can't cancel it. They can auto-attack him, but that means they're going to have to stand there and auto-attack a Shaman. Which is not too good. Definitely not too good. So he goes in here, pops that BKB, Shackles the Battle Rider. Yeah, that's a 7 second stun. Obviously, he's not going to need the 7 seconds. Gets the Hex onto the Nyx, preventing any Carapace or anything of the sort. Kites into the trees. I love this movement, right? A lot of people, they run straight back to their base, right? Think about it. Think about it. This is why crit is crit and you're not, okay? And I'm not either. Trust me. Most people would run here, but that's still in vision. You still can get jumped. This is much safer, right? It's in the trees. He can hide. They don't know exactly where he is. They might blink on him and he can get the hex off, right? All right, and that's going to be about all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed Learn some stuff. If you did, smash the like button and subscribe. And of course, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. But yeah, that's going to be about all, folks. Remember, click the link down below and subscribe to the Game Leap website where we have thousands of videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.